A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. Glad that you are with me on the program today. We'll be talking about uh, the prospect of additional armed protests around the country in the days ahead. uh, And what you need to know. Uh, about the uh, potential for those uh, protests. I, um, you may have seen this, too. I've, I've seen this flyer online uh, over the last couple of days, Refuse to be silent, armed march on Capitol Hill and all state capitals, they say. Uh, demand freedom in the corruption. A couple of things about this. Um, first of all, there, so there's no organizer listed here for this uh, supposed protest uh, march on the Capitol. March on all 50 state capitals. Nobody's taking credit for this. Nobody is uh, claiming to organize this. That's red flag number... Well, that's actually probably red flag number two now that I think about it. Because red flag number one is that what this is calling for uh, is against the law. Certainly at the U.S. Capitol, unless you are a uh, licensed concealed carry holder in Washington, D.C., you can't carry a concealed firearm in D.C. Open carry prohibited in Washington, D.C., and the same is true in many states around the country. We're going to have a piece at uh, Bearing Arms actually this afternoon from a a New Jersey Second Amendment activist because New Jersey gun owners are worried about this. Uh, You know, in New Jersey, they're one of the handful of states left, eight, I believe, that are may issue in terms of their concealed carry laws. So the average New Jersey resident cannot legally get a concealed carry license, open carry against the law in New Jersey. And so, again, this flyer is encouraging gun owners to go out and break the law, which is not going to end well, A, for those who uh, participate in an event like that, but B, for the Second Amendment movement itself, which is pretty obvious. But I have an idea that uh, those folks who are uh, behind this flyer probably don't really give a damn uh, about the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. They just want to fight. So I would encourage you, if your state-level Second Amendment Association hasn't put out anything about, uh, you know, any sort of rally or anything like that, honestly, I'd stay away. Because you don't know who's putting this together. You don't know who's involved. Uh, It's really sketchy. Every every Second Amendment rally or event that I've attended, I've known who's putting it on. I've known who the organizers are. Uh, This one is just raising, I got to tell you, it's raising all kinds of red flags with me. Uh, If you have any questions, again, I would reach out to your your state level 2A groups uh, in whatever state you live and ask them what they think about this. But my advice, stay away from this, this one. This this is, uh, again, the alarm bells are ringing for me. Now, we've got an event coming up in Virginia next Monday. Uh, January 18th. It is the annual VCDL Lobby Day. This has been scheduled for a year, basically. Uh, And we've talked with Philip Van Cleve of the VCDL about this event in the past. This year was already going to be a lot different. You remember in November of 2020, uh, about a year ago, the scene in Richmond, Virginia, at the Lobby Day, where there were tens of thousands of gun owners who poured into downtown Richmond. Uh, Governor Ralph Northam declared a state of emergency ahead of time. The Capitol grounds was declared a a gun-free zone. Uh, So you had about 6,000 or so uh, citizens who were there on the Capitol grounds. Uh, I was, including the speakers, I, I spoke at Lobby Day last year, and I went through the magnetometer and everything. Uh, but then outside of that security cordon, you had uh, somewhere between fifteen and 30,000 uh, gun owners. And there was not one arrest. Well, I take that back. There was one arrest. Charges were ultimately dropped. Somebody was wearing a mask. Huh? Right? That was when you weren't supposed to wear a mask. Um, but it was because it was, it was cold. They weren't trying to d- disguise themselves. Now, of course, you'd get in trouble if you didn't wear a mask. But that event took place peacefully. And uh, this year, things are going to be different. Um, 
hopefully not in terms of the peacefulness. I anticipate that everybody who will be taking part in this year's lobby day is going to be peaceful. But the circumstances have changed. The legislature is no longer meeting at the state capitol. Uh, now they're, they're meeting off campus, so to speak. Uh, more importantly, gun control activists actually managed to get all of the permits to hold events on the Capitol grounds on the 18th, even though VCDL has basically requested this and has never had an issue year in, year out. I think uh, last time I talked with Philip Van Cleve, he said it was like 17 years that they've been doing this, never had an issue until this year when the gun control groups got all of the permits all day long at the uh, state Capitol. Well, I think the exception, I think it was like 6 p.m. or 6 a.m., you could have held an event there. So instead of an event at the Capitol, what Philip Van Cleve is calling for is basically a, a mobile caravan. Uh, gun owners driving into Richmond from uh, across the state, driving around the downtown area, honking their horns, uh, you know, showing their support for the Second Amendment, letting lawmakers know, hey, we're here, uh, and then leaving. But this is not an armed protest. Although it's worth noting that there has been apparently some discussion about uh, whether or not it's good for this to uh, continue. Uh, according to the Virginia Mercury and online discussions about the VCDL event, some of the group's supporters question whether it is still wise to proceed in the aftermath of riots at the U.S. Capitol, urging organizers to cancel. They worry that the planned format would resemble the, quote, Trump trains organized by the president's most fervent supporters, but other members wrote that canceling could be perceived as giving in to gun control groups. In an interview, VCDL President Philip Van Cleve seemed firmly in the latter camp. He said, quote, what happened in D.C. had nothing to do with us, nothing whatsoever to do with us, adding that there have been, quote, unfortunate acts of political violence happening around the country. He noted that Governor Ralph Northam declared a state of emergency ahead of last year's event and, quote, nothing happened. He said, I can't guarantee that nothing would happen again if somebody's determined to cause a problem, but we can't stop every time that there's a potential threat. They'll just keep doing it, and we won't be able to ever have an event again of any sort. And he went on to stress that the Virginia Citizens Defense League cares about one issue, guns. And he wants rally goers to stick to that message and be peaceful. He says, we've got police there. Their job is to be on the lookout for trouble. And if there's trouble, their job is to handle it. That's what we pay them for. So it looks like at this point anyway, the uh, Lobby Day mobile rally uh, is going to continue in Richmond, Virginia. But again, I want to stress that, that that event is not an illegitimate attempt to uh, start some sort of coup. It is not uh, an event that is based around the idea of political violence. It is not an event that is based around the idea of breaking the law or even engaging in acts of civil, nonviolent disobedience. Lobby Day is exactly what it says. It is a day for gun owners to be a part of the political process, not to attack it. It's a day where gun owners show up and let their voices be heard. Their voices be heard. Not through threats of intimidation, but through reason. Through the pleas to look at the Constitution to consider the impact of gun control laws under debate. And by the way, in Virginia, it should be noted that uh, in this legislative session, there doesn't appear to be a big push for gun control. Democrats seem to be backing off of that after passing a half dozen watered-down gun control bills last year. Governor Ralph Northam's signature gun ban, magazine ban, suppressor ban. went no. Well, it didn't go nowhere. It, it passed out of the House of Delegates last year, and then it died in the state Senate. And the delegate who sponsored that bill last year says, I, I'm not really going to bring it up again. It's still out there. It could be brought up. There is a reason for gun owners to go and contact and, and, and speak to their lawmakers to make their voices heard. Again, in a civil fashion, within the boundaries of civil society. And that's what Lobby Day has been. That's what Lobby Day is all about. So, you know, I understand the concerns from folks who say, ah, yeah, you know, what if this gets hijacked? Totally agree. And that's why I think it's incumbent on gun owners, particularly in the state of Virginia, 
who are planning on being involved in Lobby Day to, without hesitation, uh, condemn the idea of using Lobby Day as anything other than uh, an exercise of your First Amendment rights and your Second Amendment rights to lobby in support of laws that protect and secure our right to keep and bear arms and to lobby against those bills that would restrict or infringe on our right to keep and bear arms. So I said that uh, earlier, I, I spoke at last year's Lobby Day. Um, I am scheduled to speak at this year's Lobby Day. Again, it's going to be different because it's all sort of virtual. So I, I will actually be, as soon as I finish recording today's broadcast, I'll be taping my speech uh, that will air or stream uh, during the Lobby Day activities. And, you know, I'll probably reiterate some of what I have said here today uh, during my uh, talk at Lobby Day to remind folks, not just gun owners, but to remind the other side, to remind gun control advocates, to remind people who want to strip us of a right to keep and bear arms, that this is an event that is not designed to chill speech. It is not an event that is designed to intimidate. It is an event that is designed to allow citizens to participate in their government. We as citizens have the right to lobby our government officials. We have the right to speak to our lawmakers and to say, hey, we're concerned about these things. And that's what this event is about. And anybody who would try to use that event for their own purposes, again, they're, they're not allies in the Second Amendment movement. They're not your friends. They don't have the best interest of the Constitution at heart, no matter what they claim. But I know that those who, who are taking part, whether it's online, whether they're getting in their car and they're driving, I know that those who are doing that for the right reason will be there. And I hope that they use their voice between now and Monday, again, to remind those who would not have the best interests of the second movement at heart to stay the hell home. I mean, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? If you're not going to be there for the right reason, don't be there. If you're not going to be there to support lawmakers who do support our right to keep and bear arms, if instead you're there to try to burn it all down, don't need you, don't want you. And look, I'm not a part of the VCDL leadership. Uh, if, if Phil wants to uh, correct anything that I said, he, he, we, he can reach out. We're on good terms. But that is why I will be participating in Lobby Day this year. I, I'm not going to be silenced. I'm not going to let these individuals who don't have the best interests uh, of our rights in this movement um, silence me. It's not going to happen. So we should speak out. We should speak up. In Virginia, we should use our vote this year to ensure that we elect officials who will stand and protect our right to keep and bear arms. But again, anybody who wants to use any of these events to try to uh, foster discord, to uh, try to lash out violently, you're not going to start a revolution. Sorry, hate to burst your bubble. But you will give aid and comfort and plenty of ammunition to those who want to infringe on our right to keep and bear arms. Because they will use those opportunities to advance their agenda. And you may decide, look, uh, politics, I'm done with politics. Well, politics isn't done with you. Even in, we talked about this with uh, John Stokes on the program yesterday, even in the, the Civil War, we had elections. Even in the War of Independence, we had elections. Politics doesn't stop, no matter how ticked off you might be about it. It keeps going. The political process survives. If it doesn't, we've got much bigger issues to worry about because we're basically, you know, at that point, it's Mad Max. So the political process does continue to be uh, the way in which we fight 
for our right to keep and bear arms. We use legislators. We use lawsuits. We use governors. We use the political system. We don't always win. Sometimes we don't get everything we want. Sometimes a good bill dies on the the floor of the House or it dies in committee. Sometimes bad bills get watered down and become slightly less onerous, but still nothing we can really support. Is that a victory? Is that a loss? It's politics. And we keep fighting. And I believe in Virginia this year, we actually have a chance to make some gains, to make some headway. But it's going to take all of us working together within the system in order to make that happen. All right, now let's turn our attention to today's Armed Citizen story, our good deed of the day, uh, as well as our recidivist report. Not really a recidivist report this time around, but still, I'm just, it's just one of those stories where you're like, really? We've been talking so much about riots lately. So uh, this headline from the Altoona Mirror, teen pleads guilty in Coalport shooting and riot case. Uh, one of the teens involved in a shooting and riot incident in Coalport, Pennsylvania, back in June of 2019, pleaded guilty on Monday during a uh, plea in sentencing court. Uh, and the uh, teenager in this case getting a whopping 30 days to a year behind bars, which means 30 days behind bars. Police say uh, three men, uh, Charles Smith, who's now 20, Cole Brown, who's now 19, and uh, Josiah Williams, who's also now 19, along with five other juveniles, traveled from uh, Indiana, PA, to Coalport to beat the snot out of somebody who lived there. They encountered this guy with another group of individuals, uh, And a riot basically ensued. Two juveniles in the defendant's group had ball bats that were used during the altercations. Two other known juveniles reportedly had handguns that were discharged. Uh, Video taken from a a local church was used to identify the individuals involved. The borough ended up getting locked down. People were asked to stay in their homes because uh, an active shooter was reported in the area. Rumors persisted on Facebook that the activity was gang-related. In all, nine people charged in the case, six of them juveniles. Uh, But Charles Smith, again, who's now 20 years of age, he pleaded guilty to felony riot. Uh, as well as the planning and use of a firearm, uh, weapons charges, misdemeanor disorderly conduct charges. And the judge in this case, again, sentenced Mr. Smith to uh, 30 days to one year in jail, which means 30 days. Uh, It means 30 days. I I know, theoretically, he could be held for longer than that. It's not going to happen. Along with two years of consecutive probation, according to record employee, the uh, cases against the other two adults still pending. The uh, identities of the juveniles not released. Uh, On to our armed citizen story of the day from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where a homeowner shot and killed a home intruder on, um, when was this? Was this Monday morning? Actually, no, this was uh, Sunday morning, I believe it was, around uh, 5.30 in the morning. Investigators say that uh, 27-year-old Alden Smith unlawfully entered a residence through a window and was subsequently shot by a homeowner inside. He succumbed to his injuries at the scene. The investigation continues, but at this point, uh, all signs point to this being a a case of self-defense. And finally today, our good deed of the day from WFMY-TV, where a uh, man in North Carolina saved the life of his neighbor, neighbor he'd never met, by the way, Uh, That's the uh, individual in question. As WFMY reports, started as a normal Saturday for uh, Livingston Paula uh, and his neighbor, Mark Wall. They both live on LaCrest Court in Walkertown, North Carolina. It's a private dirt road, usually pretty quiet. Residents that live off of it kind of keep to themselves. One of the nice things about living out in the country, you kind of know your neighbors, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, So Livingston Paula and his wife were headed out shopping and they saw a car on the side of the road. People inside looked like they needed help. So he and his wife pulled over, see what was going on, and they discovered Mark Wall, unconscious, lying on the grass. Uh, Livingston said you could see the blue in his face. So he began to perform CPR on the man until an ambulance showed up. He said, I finally got him to take a breath, and then I was able to take a breath. Uh, Paramedics were able to stabilize him on the way to the hospital. Mark Wall spent a couple of weeks uh, recovering. So I guess this was not last Sunday. This has been a while. But uh, Mark and his wife determined to find the man who saved his life. And... uh, He said, my wife saw the car in the driveway, and that's when we knew it had to be them. So a couple of days after Mark got home, he brought a fruit basket and went to uh, thank uh, Livingston and the Paulas for uh, all that they did for he and his family in the right place at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing for a neighbor and a stranger. And now strangers no more. Livingston Paula, we thank you, sir, for your very good deed. 
That is all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. I want to thank you for being a part of the program as always. Uh, don't forget, you can subscribe on YouTube to Town Hall Media. That way you'll never miss a program. On Rumble, we're at Bearing Arms Cam and Company. If you want the podcast version, you can find us at Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all of the uh, major platforms. Certainly do appreciate your support. We'll be back tomorrow with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information. In the meantime, don't forget to check out BearingArms.com, the website. And uh, also, don't forget, be well, be safe, and be free.